All right, today we're checking out the PARD NV008S night vision scope. And in particular, we're checking out the new model, which is the NV008S LRF. And the LRF stands for Laser Range Finder. And another super cool thing about this website and PARD is that you can put these scopes on layaway. So if you don't have the full amount of the optic that you want to buy, you just pay a little bit on it, you pay a little bit next month, and then when you reach the balance, you get your scope. So, pretty awesome. The other thing I want to mention real fast before we even get into this video, this is all metal construction. This thing's aluminum from head to toe. It's also super compact. So it's compact, rugged, and it works really good. As a scope, not as a night vision device, this thing is awesome. And so it has the built-in rangefinder ballistic calculator. So we're going to demonstrate all that in this video on my FX Boss. So you can find this and a lot of other super awesome stuff, including thermal scopes. You got the DS35 night vision scope. And they have reasonable prices. It's the same price as other night vision scopes. I'm just going to say as other leading brands. But it's a lot better. For instance, it has three times the battery life. Also looks a lot cooler. Anyway, in this video, we're going to burn through everything I can tell you about the scope. As far as the operation, what all the buttons do, the features, and all that. As well, I know you guys like shooting. So we're going to strap this bad boy on my FX Boss FT Dirty 30 Caliber. And we're going to sow some seeds of destruction. So I'm guessing this unit records. We'll get some daytime footage and some nighttime footage. And I'll show you everything you need to know to operate this bad boy. All right, hardcore specs. You can get this with or without the laser. Now there's two frequencies of infrared light, 850 nanometers, we're gonna say, and 940 nanometers. So I'll explain the difference between those in a little bit. Or you can get it with no infrared illuminator, which is gonna save space and weight because most people run an auxiliary infrared flashlight anyway. I like to run one that zooms in so I can have a wide field of view or I can zoom in and shoot that beam like 300 yards easily. So you also have a choice of magnification between four and a half to nine power, or you can get the six and a half to 13 power. In stock, ready to ship. This thing looks like it's straight out of the special forces kit right there. All right. It's just as I thought, this is a day or night vision scope with a rangefinder. So the LRF has the rangefinder on there, and it also has a ballistic calculator built into the scope. So you just program like what your pellet weight is and the speed and stuff, and this scope's going to get super smart on you. Ballistic calculator. This feature is only included in the LRF model. The ballistic calculator allows the user to enter the ballistic data from their specific projectile into the PARD night vision scope. This feature allows the user to be more accurate at longer distances by calculating the trajectory of the shooter's projectile. It says the upgraded laser rangefinder can detect objects up to 1,300 yards away. The distance is displayed near the reticle for continuous range detection. So you can always see how far your crosshairs are pointing. That's awesome. It says the sensitivity of the camera is up to 0.001 lux, which basically just tells how good the night vision works. This ensures that targets will be visible in the lowest of light conditions. It says this has self-activated recording. Self-activated recording allows the full shooting process to be auto-recorded and saved on a TF card without manually activating the record button. As well, the NV008S has the PARD image engine module, and it was developed by the PARD team to provide an enhanced visual image. It says that the quality is improved by more than 20% compared to the previous models. The PARD 2K sensor has a resolution of 1920 by 1080. That's very good. That's the exact same resolution that all my videos are shot in. Basically 1080p. This thing's loaded with buttons and features. So real quick, here's what they are and what they do. First off, I gotta tell you guys, this thing is so simple to use. Hell yeah! You almost don't even need to read the instruction manual. But I'm going to tell you the basics. The top four buttons are super easy to feel, even when you're in complete darkness. So you have your plus and minus, which is going to take you up and down. And it's also going to increase and decrease any of the values when you're setting parameters. And in the middle of those two, you got your OK button. 
So there's a short press and a long press. A long press is basically pressing it, holding it down for a second. A short press is just, boom, press it once normally. So a short press of your OK button is going to bring up your range finder. Press it one more time and it will give you the ballistic calculation. It's going to show you a little X exactly where your bullet's going to hit at wherever you're pointing at. Here's a quick look at the laser range finder in action. And I'm just holding my camera up to the eyepiece right here. That's the only way I could really capture this. So I'm going to hit the OK button, which is once again just the second large button from the front on top of the scope. Short press that, and it's going to take a distance reading wherever your crosshairs are pointing. Hit the OK button one more time, and that's going to put a little X at exactly where your projectile is going to hit. So I'm zeroed in for 36 yards. It's going to hit right there. So right here, I pointed at something that's 80 yards away. Just short press the OK button once. It's going to take a reading. I'm at 79 yards. Hit it one more time, and it shows me there's an X where I'm going to hit about two mil dots down. Once again, you guys, it's more clear in person. I'm just holding my camera up to the eyepiece. This does have an HDMI output interface, but it doesn't come with the HDMI cable. Otherwise, we could probably get this on a TV screen. Now, if you long press the OK button, that is hold it down for about one second, release it, then you're going to start recording. Just do the same thing to stop recording. So it's super simple. That's basically the only button you're going to use when you're in the field. The last button, the bottom button, you just short press that once, and that's going to bring up the menu. Now, the menu is so simple. It basically tells you exactly what each item is, and when you click on it, it's just basically turning it on and off, or it may have two or three choices. Everything is super simple. There's things like Wi-Fi. So, like, if you want to connect to your app, you're going to have to go in there and turn the Wi-Fi on. And if you're in the field and you're not using your phone or anything like that, you can turn the Wi-Fi off to save battery. Anytime you want, you can just hit it back to default settings, which are pretty right on. Default's going to come with Wi-Fi off. Your audio recording is going to be on. And if you do read the manual, which I recommend, it's very, very simple and easy to understand. They have it laid out in sort of like bullet points, and it couldn't be simpler. I really got to hand it to Pard for how they designed this scope and their easy to follow clear manual. So to turn the scope on, you're going to do a long press on the power button. And then you're going to see a little blue indicator light. And that means it's on. Now, if you want to put the scope to sleep, you just short press the power button. And then your indicator light will still be on. But if you look in your screen, there will be nothing in there. Then you just short press that thing one more time. It'll bring it back to life. And of course, long press to turn it off. Super simple. When you're navigating through the menu, use the plus and minus to go up and down. Hit the OK button to select. And then in most cases, you'll hit OK to make your selection. And then hit OK again, and it'll back you out of the menu. Short press the menu button, and it'll take you back to the hunting screen. One thing is that you can't bring up the menu while you're recording. Another thing this has is a compass. So I think the one, one of the first choices there on your menu is a gyroscope. And that's basically your compass. So no matter where you are, you look through your scope, it's going to tell you the direction that you're facing. Pretty handy. Basically, if you want to do the calibration on that, it says just put the rifle level, hold it still, hit the calibration button, hold it still while it's calibrating, boom, you're done. Probably the best thing to do would be to set that on a level surface, maybe on your bench rest. To adjust the crosshairs, also super, super simple. You just take your first shot, see where it goes. You're going to go to the fourth choice down, reticle adjustment. Hit OK. And then by hitting the OK button, you can scroll through the different choices. So your X axis is going to be left to right. Your Y axis is going to be straight up and down. And you basically just highlight, let's say, the X axis. And then as you hit the plus and minus, you'll be able to watch your crosshairs go up and down on the paper. Just like a normal scope. So get that perfect. Hit OK. It'll go to the Y axis. You go up and down with that. Get it on your impact point. And then style, you can pick different styles of reticles. I like the one that they put in there. You can pick a different colors of reticles. And at the end, you actually have to hit the plus button to save it. And then hit OK. And you'll be out. If you noticed that my picture was blurry just then when I was showing you the reticle adjustment, that's because you have to focus the picture for wherever you're pointing. So you use the rear diopter ring to focus your crosshairs. And that's going to be different for every person. Then you use a front focus ring to focus your picture. And it's very sensitive. 
it's got this handle that'll come out and it actually has three different positions so for fine adjustments that is nice to have but you can get your crosshairs and your picture just razor sharp and it looks just as good as regular scope to me especially those crosshairs here's some target shooting that i did at 36 yards away and we're going to make all the same shots in pitch black darkness in just a second here. So as you can see, in daytime I got no problem shooting out the bullseye. 44 grain JSBs using the FX Bose. And now check this out. This is literally pitch black darkness. I turned all the lights in my house off. And I live in the country, so there's no street lights. This is as dark as it gets. As you can see, though, when you're looking through the NV008S, it looks just like daylight. Now, you can go in there and tweak the exposure if you want to really fine-tune your picture. But this is with no adjustment. All I did was focus in my picture. Same as daytime. And boom. You can literally do target shooting at night. That's how clear and precise this whole setup is. This right here, we're shooting pellet on pellet at 36 yards away, no problem. And it's so sharp, it's just like shooting in the daytime. When you're looking through the scope, it's even clearer than the video that you guys are seeing here. So it's pretty amazing. I went ahead and programmed the ballistic calculator to match my 30 caliber 44.7 grain ammo. So everything in this list is pretty easy. The BC of whatever ammo you're shooting, if it's a firearm, it's probably going to be on the box. If it's a pellet, you can look it up. There will be a link in the description to Hard Air Magazine. They list all the BCs for all the pellets. In my case, I went on the Airgun Nation, and they told me the BC for my particular pellet, and it was 0 .043. The elevation of my house is 997 feet, so I just put 1,000. This is all really easy stuff. The only part I didn't know straight off was how to check your scope height, and this is basically the height from the center of the bore to the center of the scope. So here's a couple ways that you can do that. You can basically just eyeball it because this is actually one of the least important parameters to your whole ballistic calculation. One guy said that if you were two millimeters off at a thousand yards, your shot would just be three quarters of an inch low. So that's how little it matters, but you want to get it right if you can. So you can just eyeball it or the most precise way is to measure the diameter of your bore, the diameter of your scope, and then the distance between the top of the barrel and the bottom of the scope. And then, of course, the two diameter numbers you would cut in half because that's going to be the middle. You add those three together. And when I did that, I came out with almost the exact same number. So I put all that in there, and the thing worked like a charm. I was hitting one-inch targets with no problem at 70 yards away, just with my ballistic calculator. Really, really awesome. It was definitely a blast. My scope's been sleeping for like two hours, so should be well-rested. I'm sure as heck did hit him in the head. We'll know if it's working if I can hit these little targets. So I'm just warming up on these life-size critters right here. Making headshots with no problem. Remember, this is at 76 yards away. The chin, I'm only sighted in for 36 yards. So once again, the BC figures out my bullet drop and puts a little hash mark exactly where it's going to hit. No matter where I'm pointing. So it's pretty amazing. These chickens have the kill zone about the size of a quarter. So I call these one inch chickens. And it was like a cakewalk hitting those things. Daytime or nighttime. They're really, really awesome. I got two with one shot. That was awesome. This is shooting from more or less the exact same distance in pitch black darkness. 
and the area is just lit up like daytime as long as you're looking through the scope. If you guys don't know, infrared light is invisible to people, I'm pretty sure animals as well. So I'm lighting up this whole area like it's daytime, but I'm the only one that can see it. Strange when you first get out there and you realize that you're just target shooting like it's daytime, but it's pitch black. I gotta tell you, I've never been more impressed or more excited about a product that I reviewed on the Airgun channel. It's definitely a little bit surreal when you're out there in the middle of the night popping targets at 70 yards. Again, in pitch black darkness. Man, perfect headshot. Just a couple more quick things, and this is pretty much going to be everything you need to know to operate the scope. The second button from the back on top, you're going to long press that, and that's going to switch you to night vision mode, also known as black and white mode. This is an example you could do it in the daytime too, but if you ever look through your scope at night and you don't see anything, just hold down that button for about one second, and your scope will click over to night vision mode. I think that's pretty much it. It comes with a couple shims. So for air guns, they suggest that you use those. I just stacked one on top of each other in the very back. And my scope came out perfect. Staying true to their simple design and simple everything, the app is super easy to use. There's nothing complicated about it. You just turn the Wi-Fi on on the scope. Then look under the Wi-Fi on your phone and select PARD. And then you just open the app, which I believe is called PARD Vision. And that's it. It just connects to your scope. And that's it. Once you connect to your scope, I really like the fact that there's not a bunch of complicated stuff in the app. It's simply small screen, big screen, record, or take a picture. And that's it. So I really like that. All right, you guys, that's it for me on this one. Like I said before, this has got to be one of the most badass products I've ever reviewed. I'm super happy I got an opportunity to review this scope. I can guarantee you guys that if you put one of these on layaway, or grab one, you will not be disappointed. You'll be thanking me. All right, everybody. Till next week. Happy shooting. See you on the next one.